Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today we're going to be talking about the Babylon game engine. Now, I've talked about this one a couple of times in the past on the channel and quite frankly, if you are looking to do web and 3D, there are two choices in my opinion. There's Play Canvas, which by the way was recently open sourced, and there is Babylon JS. They both definitely have their merits, but there was definitely one downside to Babylon JS and that was the lack of an official editor and that has changed. So it's going to make turnkey game development with Babylon Babylon JS so much easier going forward. So first off, Babylon JS here, a uh, ton of materials available for it, uh, tons of examples to get you up and going, a number of different editors available for it as well. And then feature and functionality wise, it's got all of the cool rendering things that you would expect. It's got the ability to import in a number of different 3D file formats, uh, full audio engine in there for doing 3D audio, supports Gaussian splats, it's got Havoc character physics built in there as well. Tons of uh, features available. You get an idea, just scratching the surface of what Babylon JS can do. It can do a lot. So it's built on top of WebGL, but also WebGPU. So it is pretty current. Uh, if you have a modern browser, you're probably a little bit shocked of the graphical capability of Babylon JS. But again, one of the big downsides to it was the lack of an editor. So that's like when you're using Godot or Unity or Unreal Engine or Play Canvas or Flax or Default or whatever else, all of those game engines have editors. So the ones that are pure frameworks, they're kind of missing out here because they're not as easy for people to get up and going. And when you want to build and compose your world, well, it's tricky. Well, that has changed. So Babylon JS uh, tweeted a couple days ago, have you heard the news? Babylon JS editor V5 has officially launched. What are you waiting for? Go check it out. So you may be interested to know there's actually, yes, been four previous iterations of this, but the thing is there hasn't been a release of the V4 editor in since 2022, I believe it was. So now we have the Babylon JS editor. This is an application. You can get it for both Windows and Mac OS. On the Linux side of things, will it run in Wine? I have no idea. I also got to warn you, it's early. So I've actually found quite a few things that just don't work the way I expect it. Uh, in terms of features and functionality, well, we have uh, built-in templates. This is really nice. So you don't really, all the scaffolding you need to set up your project is done for you by the editor. So things like setting up Next.js, Solid.js, or vanilla templates, all done for you. Uh, I will show you that in just a second. Uh, it is also entirely open source, hosted on GitHub, and is cross-platform available for Windows and Mac OS, so unified development environment that supports all major platforms, allowing you to focus on creativity and innovation rather than compatibility issues. Uh, and then it's got a number of integrated tools uh, such as KTX compressed texture support um, and so on. And they did this like experiment project. I wish they'd make this downloadable. I couldn't find it anywhere. Uh, but it is a cinematic they built entirely in the editor. Gives you an idea of what it's capable of. They used a number of assets from like Quixel, Sketchfab, and Fab, which is probably why uh, they did not make it downloadable, which is a shame. And then on top of that, there is solid and decent documentation. You can see a bit of an overview of the editor. We'll show you that in a second. Uh, again, fully documented, all of the things you need to know. And then finally, this is an open source project. It is under the Apache 2 license. Like I said here, has not been an update to the version four of this since 2022. So you basically think of this as a brand new project. Now it is technically a separate project to Babylon JS. You'll notice here, if you go to their GitHub repository, they have Babylon JS, that is the framework, and then they have the editor. So this is a separate process, but you're going to see the editor is getting updated pretty continuously. So this is now available, makes using Babylon JS a lot easier. So let's go ahead and check this one out. So let's go ahead, we'll fire up the editor. Um, so again, this is a local install. Of course, again, this is all entirely free and open source if you wanna go ahead and check it out. You load it up, you come to this dashboard. Uh, I don't know where my projects went. So again, I will also tell you, it's been a little buggy. Actually, it's been a lot buggy. So it's one of those things to be aware of. There are going to be things they need to work out. That's just the nature of the beast here, uh, such as I don't know where my projects went, but we're creating a new one, so it doesn't matter. So you can see, you start, you pick your package manager between Yarn uh, and other ones. I'm gonna stick with Yarn, and then you pick which template you wanna go with. I will stay with Next.js. This will set up a scaffolding of a project for you. You need to locate your project, which of course means temp right here, and we will call this one Babby5. 
All right, there we go. So we'll select that folder and we will create our project and we will go ahead and open our project as well. And really that is it for setting up your initial project. Welcome to the editor. Now, the cool thing here is your project was created entirely behind the scenes. So I come up here, I can go ahead and open up in Visual Studio Code, assuming you have Visual Studio Code installed and you'll see there is your project. So all of the scaffolding is there. So the public expose, uh, the, the source code of your application right here, uh, your uh, scripts, we'll show you the script later on. Uh, so let's get rid of the stupid chat window. So here you can see, now one thing I wanna point out to you immediately is this. So you have to have these dependencies missing. Uh, and what you're going to do is open up a command prompt or a terminal, whatever you're on, go into the directory that you just created. So I think it was Babby5, like so. And then you're gonna to wanna to run NPM, which is the Node Package Manager. Make sure you have Node installed before you install the um, Babylon JS editor. It will prompt you, by the way, so it's not a big deal. But come in here and go Babylon uh, JS editor tools. So those need to be installed for this to work. Uh, that will fix the uh, issues that you have here in terms of finding these things. It will also fix a bug or um, an error when you try to run your project inside of the editor. So we'll go ahead and let that resolve. Uh, it will do its thing. All right, there we go. So our project is now installed. I do believe if I shut that down and open it back up, our errors will go away. So you can see here, this is a sample script uh, and we're gonna go check that out in action. So let me just go back over here, make this not full screen anymore. And let's go over to our editor. So here we are. So here is our new project. This is the editing environment. Over here, you can see you have your um, project assets. Over here, you have your scene. Uh, you can open up multiple scenes. So for example, here, this is an example scene. I could go ahead and reload it, basically the exact same thing. You wanna go ahead and check and run your scene. Click this little guy over here. If it does not work, go check your console error and it's probably going to be the exact um, thing we just ran. But there you can see our scene is running. So how does this work? Well, what you see here, this is created as a box. We could create new instances of things like here. So box, mesh, plane mesh, and so on. Um, and then it's got a script attached to it. So you can notice here on scripts, this has that script we looked at over here. So this takes a single parameter speed. So you see here defaults to 0.4, max value is 0.1, min value is 0.0. So we head on back over here. And what you'll notice here is the um, box has the script attached to it. So you can attach multiple scripts to an object, by the way. It has a slider that goes to from zero to one, like so. So you can add multiple scripts. That is how your scripting is attached to entities in your world. Uh, again, you could create new objects like this. So you could create an instance of something or I can add a new, uh, add another box into the world. Oh, I did not mean to parent that. All right, let's, let's deparent that. So there is our new box. I'll go ahead and select that, move that over and up a bit like so. And then again, you can take that script we have. So here, project, uh, source, scripts, box, drop that box into there, go ahead and run that. And it won't do anything because I did not give it a speed. Let's try that again. So there is how you can apply scripts to objects within your scene. Now on top of that, we have a number of other different settings here. So for example, here you go to your default scene and you're gonna find you have a number of different settings here. You can set in and you can bring in an environment texture. You can turn fog on, you can attach a script to your entire scene, physics, and then we get here like rendering pipeline, our subsurface ambient occlusion, motion blur, etc. But pipeline, for example, if I go to a custom pipeline, so I enable this right here, you're gonna see we got all kinds of options here. So I could come down here, uh, we can change our, um, our image processing, so the post-processing stack on it. We can do a color grading, color curve sharpening, depth of field, vignette effect, chromatic aberration, uh, and so on. And also there is the ability to do, um, oh, where did it go? Oh, this isn't that intuitive. Uh, tone mapping. So I could turn tone mapping on, click in here, and then we can set up the type of tone mapping we want, and you can configure it all that way. Now, one thing I found, again, I have just some bugs in the system. Here I grab this light, for example. This is a sun. This is a directional light. Uh, and then I could do something like here, come up and give it a red pallor, right? But when I go ahead here and add uh, to the root, add a new uh, point light, for example, when I move the point light around, it doesn't seemingly do anything. So I don't know. Oh, no, there it is working now. Okay, that time we got it working. That's nice. 
Uh, and then here, let's change our salary. So let's go here and try to make this point like blue because I've had this fail in the past, but this seems to be working a bit better this time. Okay, I don't know why it works sometimes. It does not work other times, beats me. Again, uh, I, I don't know. I, I am kind of at a complete loss why that seemingly worked this time and it didn't other times, but it also seems to only be affecting this object over here and not all of them. So I don't know. Uh, you're gonna run into some huh moments when dealing with this. Another thing we've got here is your assets. This is obviously really important when you're gonna start instantiating objects into your scene. What I did is I went to um, a recent uh, Humble Bundle for Unreal Engine and I exported out a series of objects. So for example, here, here is a dumpster. Uh, and then here, for example, is a skyscraper, like so. Uh, and let's just drop those in order. So we imported them in. So here is our dumpster. Getting the dumpster up and going is as simple as that. And then boom, there you see your manipulations over here and so on. So bring in an object that way. And then the skyscraper, drop that one in. Skyscraper over there. And you're gonna notice it's small. So let's just scale it up a hundred fold. And there is our skyscraper in the background like that. So it's got all the basics of what you need to get things up and going when you wanna go ahead and compile your game. You do have that option over here. Uh, you can run your project here. There is also an export. Oh, I'm blind. It's literally right there. You can export your project out there. So then you could go and host it on the web or whatever you need. So that kind of is it. In in an essence, it's again, there are some weird things I can't figure out. For example, this box script looks like it should work on any mesh object. Our imported object here, uh, this um, dumpster here, uh, says that it is of type mesh up here. But when I go into, for example, scripts, like source, scripts, box, apply our box to the scene, give it a value, and then run it, my dumpster doesn't spin. So I don't know what's going on there. Again, you're gonna be kind of dancing with dragons with this one. There be dragons for sure on this, uh, cause it is pretty early on. But at the same time, it's a pretty neat program. I, I think there's a lot to admire about it. So if you're interested in checking that one out, head on over to editor.babylonjs.com or of course for Babylon itself, just head on over to babylonjs.com, no editor to start it. And frankly, uh, Babylon.js is a great project. One of the weaknesses is this lack of editor, and this goes a long way towards addressing that. Again, you're going to find some glitches, some bugs, some problems, uh, some missing features, and so on. Some things are even just like straight out um, stand-ins. Like for example, here, you'll see animations is just set as coming soon. Although interestingly enough, if you bring in an animated object, such as, uh, let's bring in this guy from the uh, Epic Games Weekly Giveaway, we have an animated droid drop that into the scene here. Uh, this thing actually, let me figure out where the heck it is. Oh, here, I'm spinning, yeah, there we go. So bring that guy over and up. Oh uh, yeah, and scale it. Another thing that I find is their default scaling is like different from everybody else in the industry. But notice this guy right here, uh, who's currently upside down, uh, he's animated. It, so animation support is there. You can bring in objects uh, and they will be animated. Uh, you just, this animation tool set is gone. Now, interestingly enough too, for some reason, all the animations seem to be here in scene. And I don't know why that is. So again, there is a learning curve here. There is definitely some issues. You are working in, like on the jagged edge on this one, but it is a very nice first step. So ladies and gentlemen, once again, that is the Babylon JS editor available at editor.babylonjs.com. I now just want to see um, the Bevy game engine for Rust get their editor out as well. Because this, again, it does make it so much more accessible, especially because it does all the project setup and management for you as well and it makes assembling your world super easy as you can see from this demo playing in the background so ladies and gentlemen what do you think of babylon js now that it has an editor let me know in the comments down below i will talk to you all later goodbye